guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel hope you guys are doing good guys have i got a team for you full auto one key nightmare hydra i mean hydra is definitely some of the hardest content hopefully this is going to help some of you get that all important one key and even if you don't have some of the champions that i have you can definitely scale back what i've built and this will help you with brutal or hard or even if when you're normal but yeah but hopefully this is going to help some of you guys out. I do want to ask as well, if you are new to the channel, please do like and subscribe. It helps my channel go and it really motivates me to make more content for you guys. So just before I show you the um, team comp, I do want to show you two things. So the first one is a champion that every single player can get and they are top tier for Hydra and definitely worth investing in. So I'm an end game player and as you can see, I'm not even close to maxing out any of the legendary guardian factions and what i would say is if you've got any dupes sell them off you just need to sell five champions and get yourself molly she is one of the best investments i've ever done in raid and um, she's done so much for my account i use her in three rotations for hydra nightmare and she is carrying the team so hard um, but i'll talk about her a little bit later but definitely worth doing especially if you're free to play like myself Great Hall. So I'm just going to show you how I've been maxing out my Great Hall uh, for Live Arena. First off, I started with speed. Speed is so important. The faster you are, it means you can go before the Hydra heads. You can sort of get out your debuff, start controlling the heads, but also you get more turns in and you can do more damage. The speed is what I went with first. Then I went into defense. So defense, um, my champions were just lacking a little bit of defense and defense is going to give your team more survivability and survivability is key to being able to get, you know, survive the big hits from the nightmare heads, but also, you know, just so you need to be able to survive so you can get more turns and do more damage. Next, I went into ignore defense, ignore defense, to be fair, sorry, just before I say that, I went into ignore defense, probably should have taken accuracy first, but I went for ignore defense because it's going to help you do more damage. Every single champion on your team will benefit from this and they're going to do more damage to the heads. The more damage you do, the more numbers you're going to rack up, making it easier to get that one key, but also you're going to take their heads down faster. And the, you know, the more times you can get the heads down, the more damage you do, the more points you can rack up. So then I went into accuracy. Of course, accuracy is one of the best stats in the game. You know, it's going to help us land debuffs like slow and block buffs and also provoke as well. And this is going to give us real control over the fight. So it is a very important stat to get. And when you can get down to level 10 plus 80, that is basically having a six star banner built into every single champion on your team. This is huge. This means you can swap out actually chess pieces for HP defense. I'm sorry, HP percentage, defense percentage, or even attack percentage if you want to do more damage. I mean, it's just crazy. You know, every single champion is going to benefit from this. It means your support champions can be have better um, defensive stats, better survivability, or even the same with your nukas. You know, either you can build it so your nukas can do some more damage, or you can give them better survivability as well. It's just such a great stat and definitely one you should prioritize. Next up, I'd definitely recommend resistance. Resistance is going to help you resist annoying debuffs like um, heal reduction, uh, weaken, and what else is there? Provokes, poisons. It is just such a useful stat. Also, it's going to help you one of the most annoying heads, and that is the head of mischief. That is going to stop it from, you know, stealing buffs from you. Or if you've got um, a mischief tank as well, that is going to help with stats as well. So good, definitely worth getting as well. And again, it's the same as the accuracy um, stat. You know, this is like having a built-in resistance banner and it just means that you can bring out, you know, you can bump up other stats, which is just huge. So let's check out the team comp and I'm just gonna bring this over here. So it's a pretty accessible team comp. We've got Nekmo, who was a guaranteed champion. Um, and then we've got Molly, who everyone can get through Token Trader. Elva, you do have to pull. And then Uko was a fusion champion as well. One of the best fusions we've ever had. And Sissia and Husk are both replaceable champions. They are both very good damage dealers for Hydra. However, 
Both of them can be replaced by it. There's so many good nukers. Um, it's more about the support champions. It's very difficult for this team comp to replace them. Um, but for lower stuff, you know, if you're doing brutal or hard, you know, Nekmo, you just want to bring in a champion that's going to boost the entire team speed. Molly, you'd replace with a provoker. Elva, a champion that's going to provide heals, cleansing, and ideally a revive as well. And then Uko, you know, he's going to just, you could replace him with any champion that does block buffs. So Nekmo, oh my God, one of my favorite champions. So he's going to boost our turn meter. It's on a three turn cooldown. And then he throws out slow as well. So slow is just going to slow down all the heads and we're going to just be super fast. And like I said, this team is built all around speed. Uh, we also get speed buffs from Molly's passive as well. So you can do this once per turn. And it's, um, it's going to boost everyone's turn meter by 25%. That is just crazy. Um, but yeah, just huge. These two together just work in harmony. And it's just, it just amazing. You will just get so many turns in. Just beautiful thing to see. Um, Elva, just so much healing. She's just a healing machine. Um, just A1, constantly throwing out heals um, with like constant heals. Oh, sorry, continuous heals. Um, I actually do lock out her A2, but you can use it if you want. And then on her A3, uh, just to mention as well, actually, we've got three revivers on this team. So Molly and Elva, both single revive, and they're both very good revives as well. Uh, Uko does an AoE revive as well. Um, and it also brings out block damage as well. Just such a nice ability. Really, really good. Um, Sissia, one of the best HP burn champions. So she will throw out a HP burn on her A3. And then she's going to do um, her A2, which has weaken and drop defense. So that's going to help the whole team do loads of damage. But it also does a lot of damage just on its own as well. Such such a good ability. And then Husk, A2, max enemy HP damage, AoE. It is one of the hardest hitting abilities for Hydra in the game. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much the team. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, so it is full auto, but... You may want to, you know, you can step in and if one of your champions is getting eaten, make sure you target that head and try and get down as fast as possible. Uh, otherwise, it might cause you to wipe or have that champion eaten. And, you know, of course, you want to get this one key on the first try. Um, also, I do want to mention we don't have any way to deal with the head of fear. On this run, the head of fear popped up three times. It didn't cause any problems. Um, all it's going to do is reduce damage for Sissia and Husk. So it can be a little bit annoying. So, you know, because of that fear, it means that maybe both of them, their A2s, which are their big hitters, aren't going to go off. So that can be annoying. But outside of that, it's not such a huge issue. So we've looked at the team. We've looked at the Great Hall. Now let's check out the champions, gears and mastery. First on the list, we've got Molly and she's in Relentless and Speed. Relentless is just amazing on her. Uh, it just means that she can cycle for abilities faster and keep that provoke on the head of cleansing for the entire fight. Um, so gloves, we've got defense, HP on the chest, speed on the boots, defense on the ring. Uh, so crit damage amulet is this is a, this is the wrong amulet for her, but it's just because it had a triple wrong accuracy. That's why I took it, and it was to help me reach those important stats that we need. And then an accuracy banner with a triple roll. Very, very nice banner. Um, so total stats. Um, I'm not going to say all of them. I'm just going to tell you what stats are important. So HP, defense, speed, and accuracy. Of course, you want her to be as fast as possible. 279 is very, very fast. So that's going to really help us outpace the head of cleansing and keep that provoke up all the time. Blessings, she doesn't really need one, to be honest. Um, I mean, if I really had to take one, I would take Lightning Cage, but it's not necessary for her. Um, books, you want in the A2 and A3. And we, yeah, we don't need anything in the A1, to be honest. And then Masteries, very, very standard stuff. Um, just uh, Offense Tree and Support Tree, hugging the left-hand side into Warmaster and taking a Life Drinker just to help keep our HP topped up. If you do find that you, you know, if you're like sort of lower down and you're struggling to keep her alive because you don't have a healer, you can just chuck her in a regen set. That's perfectly fine. And that will help keep her topped up. Okay, next up, we've got Sissia, one of my favorite champions. 
huge, huge damage dealer for Hydra. So got an, a reflection set, uh, sorry, reflection reflex set. So this is going to reduce um, one random skill cooldown by one turn, 40% chance. This is really nice. This is going to help us make, basically use her A2, uh, her A2 more often, meaning we're going to do more damage. And she's built in a weird way. So normally, you know, she's a new card. Normally you would build her with like, you know, crit damage gloves. But for Hydra, actually, she does loads of damage and you do build her differently. So she's got HP on the gloves. And these are bad gloves. These, are, you know, double roll in flat HP, awful gloves. Would like to change those out one day. And then we've got HP on the chest. Speed on the boots. HP on the ring, HP on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner. And you are going to see a theme here, a very, very common theme. So the stats are important for most of the champions are going to be HP, defense, speed, um, and accuracy. And that's the same again for Sissia. Um, you want it to be fully booked. Um, I mean, you wouldn't, you don't have to on our A1, but it is going to help with damage. I would definitely prioritize A2 and A3. Um, of course, you're going to take Brimstone on her. That Smite does so much damage. And because she does AoE on our A3 and A2, there's a very good chance that you are going to land that Smite. She has very, very specific masteries. And these are very, very important ones. So defense, just all about survivability. But then we want to make sure we take Cycle Revenge. Basically, just a good chance to help increase our turn meter by 15%. Um, that can, you know, just mean that we get more turns. Uh, accuracy on the support tree. Really important to take Arcane Celerity. So, because we throw out loads of debuffs, that means we're going to have a good chance of increasing our turn meter by 10%. Again, just making her really fast and getting us to cycle through our abilities. Definitely want to take Master Hexa for your HP burn, for your decreased defense, and for that weaken. And then one of the most important, um, is it a tier, yeah, tier six mastery, is a presser. So this is going to um, increase our turn meter fill rate by 10%. And because she throws, well, for every active debuff that we have on, and because she throws out loads of debuffs, we're always going to have that up for the entire fight. That's just huge. And again, that's just going to make her really, really fast and just make sure that we get loads of turns in. So next up is Nekmo, one of my favorite champions. Just, in, in my opinion, probably the best champion for Hydra. Um, just does so much work for you. So mine's in double perception and speed. We've got HP on the gloves, accuracy on the chest, speed on the boots, defense on the ring, defense on the amulet, and then HP on the banner. And again, you know, the stats that are really important, HP, defense, 284 speed, like you want him to be fast. And as you can see, some of my stuff's unglyphed, so I could probably bump up his speed even more. Uh, and 458 accuracy is definitely overkill, um, but that's because of the arena bonuses. So I could probably swap out that chess piece for a HP chess piece. And again, that's just going to give us that extra survivability and make Hydra even easier. So you don't need, uh, again, books, just A2 and A3. Don't really need them in the A1, but just as you see, I've had really bad luck on it. Again, because this guy does loads of AoE hits on his A2 and A1, definitely want to take Brimstone and try and get those smite, smite procs. Um, again, he's just got very sort of standard build. Um, you know, just going into War Masters on the offense tree. One thing you do want to notice, though, is you do want to take Rapid Response and Arcane Celerity. So he does throw out loads of buffs and debuffs, and they both do the same thing. There's that 30 percent chance to increase your turn up by 10%, and this is going to make him even faster than he already is, and it's just so good. Definitely, that is the only way to build him. So then we've got Uko. So this is my Uko build for Hydra. Again, another reflex um, set with perception. Again, we just want to try and, um, you know, keep that block buffs up for the entire fight. 
So we've got HP on the gloves, accuracy on the chest, speed on the boots, HP on the ring with a triple roll and defense, very nice. Defense on the amulet and then a HP banner. So 57k HP, 2.9k defense, 257 speed. Definitely could bump that up again. You know, I don't, I try to save my speed glyphs because they are important. I like to use them for arena, but again, could definitely bump this up as well. And then 361 accuracy. Um, again, yeah, you do, you do want to fully book him just because you do want to try and land that decrease attack as much as possible. Um, I don't feel like he's a champion you do have to put blessings on, but if you are, I'd say probably Brimstone's a very good one. Again, he does do a lot of AoE here, so good chance to land that. Um, alternatively, you could probably take Lightning Cage as well, just to protect buffs on himself and just do a little bit more damage as well. Uh, Mastery is just sort of very standard stuff. Again, you'll see like almost all my champions are built the same for the offense tree. Um, but the defense tree, again, just all about survivability. One thing I would say is that one thing you could do differently, uh, retribution can cause problems. If you don't have Shamal on your team, um, you might do a counterattack on the head of fear, uh, the head that's got fear on it. And that's going to cause problems because it means you might not land an A2 or, you know, yeah, it can just cause problems. So it's up to you. If you don't have Shamal, then maybe instead of taking retribution, you want to take kill streak instead. Oh, and so this is my Elva build, and she is built like an absolute beast. This is like one of my best build champions on my account. So she's got a regen shirt and then protection. Uh, protection is going to give us that plus 20 resistance and 15% HP. Uh, gloves. These are actually pretty awful gloves, to be honest. Um, I would like to swap them out later. Um, definitely just needs more speed on them, but... Uh, HP on the gloves, resistance, and a triple roll as well, resistance on the chest, uh, speed boots, defense on the ring with a triple roll and HP percentage, HP on the amulet, and then a uh, resistance banner with uh, a double roll in defense, uh, percentage defense, very, very nice. So total stats, 68k HP, 3.1k defense, 291 speed and like i said i could definitely bump this up even more and you do want it to be really fast um you know it's just so she'll just keep throwing out loads of those continuous heals on the a1 but also i've had it in the past where you know like three people have dropped to my team and she has single-handedly picked up every single champion with her a3 um it's on such a low cooldown and she can do that and she can just cycle for her ability so quickly and then she's got 530 resistance that's huge um, especially because you know she's in a regen set she doesn't have any like resistance pieces on and also she doesn't have any um she doesn't have unshakable uh so that she's missing i think is 50 plus uh resistance from her masteries as well so um yeah again doesn't need any books in her a1 but you definitely want books in the a3 and the a2 like i said a3 such a low cooldown for that single target revive just such such a good ability uh blessings if i had to choose one it probably would be uh lightning orbs or lightning cage evening just to get those lightning orbs just to protect because she does throw a lot of buffs and she can tank the head of mischief as well and she does have very specific masteries so again defense tree all the way down to cycle revenge just to try and keep our term even faster so support, she's one of the only champions where you don't take accuracy. You want to take HP. You want to take all that healing as well. Uh, rapid response, again, that's going to boost our turn meter. Lasting Gifts is great on her because she does throw out loads of continuous heals. And then, and again, Spirit Haste is going to, you know, allies are going to die. She's going to help pick them up. And that's also going to increase our speed by up to 24 and then to make her even faster, timely intervention. So increases this champion's tummy by 20% whenever an ally's HP drops below 25%. This is going to happen so much in Hydra. 
And yeah, that plus 20% is just huge. So again, like I said, she's just all about speed and she's just going to be an absolute speed demon. We've got so much speed built into her, but also these masteries as well. They're just going to add on top of that. Um, also, this is great. I actually use this Elva for Live Arena. At the moment, I am in the top 2000 and, you know, that is I'm free to play and you should see some of the whales and krakens that I come up against. And I do use her and this can come in clutch. It means that you can cut in and you can either like do a cleanse or you can just pick someone back up. And then also she's going to protect that champion with her passive and put perfect veil on them so they can't be targeted. Just such, such a good way to build her. To be honest, I feel like it's the only way to build her. Obviously, for PvE, you could mix it up, but this is such a good hybrid build for Hydra. Uh, sorry, not, not a Hydra build, it's a hybrid build for Hydra and for Rena as well. So last on the list is Husk. And where is my Husk? Uh, sorry, I, I think I missed him. Where's Husk? <laughs> sorry, sorry, guys. It took me a while to find him. There he is. So all I want to say is this Husk is actually built awful, but Husk doesn't need to be built well to get the job done. Um, he's just all about stats, and that's what's important. The stats that are important on him are HP, um, speed, uh, getting that 100% crit rate, and then crit damage. Those are the stats that are important on him. So we've got crit damage um, set, a crit rate and immortal so again crit rates just going to help us reach those stats and crit damage is also just going to help bump up our damage as well so we've got crit damage on the gloves and these are terrible gloves uh one roll in speed and then um, a double roll in attack percentage is going to do nothing for him and all i want to say is well i built this guy ages ago i could probably do some work on him but you know he's getting the job done and i'd rather put my best gear on my arena champions uh, but yeah he's got a hp chest with speed and uh substats of speed and uh, crit rate speed on the boots with a triple roll in crit rate then we've got hp on the uh ring crit damage on the amulet and then accuracy banner so total stats we've got 59k hp um speed 209 crit rate we've gone over kill but you do want to have 100 percent uh, 260 crit damage and then 316 accuracy would like that to be a little bit higher like i said on his a1 he does have that double percent uh, so that double here that can you know basically say molly fails her provoke um husk can step in as a backup provoker oh sorry and blessings i definitely took crushing rend it's just going to help increase our damage ignoring even more defense and again, just a very sort of standard build for him. Um, just all about doing damage in the offense tree. And again, like I said, you do you can get this problem where he will counterattack the head of fear. And because we don't have Shamal in this team comp, it means that you will, you know, fear will land on him. And it might mean that you fail an A2. So you don't have to. You could probably take Cycle Revenge instead and maybe take Kill Streak. But that's completely up to you guys don't have to so that's pretty much the end of the video guys i hope this helps some of you get that all important one key on hydra if you've enjoyed today's video please do leave me a cheeky thumbs up make sure you smash 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 that subscribe and i'll see you in a video soon peace